you know, guys, I want to talk with you all about something that the Lord laid in my spirit. And I'm sure many of you already know this. A lot of times when you turn your life over to the Lord and when you completely turn yourself over to Jesus Christ, where you're allowing him to be Lord of your life, where you're allowing him to show you his ways. And when you are spending time in his presence and the Holy Spirit is transforming you, you are going to become very attractive to people who are not about God. It's normally one extreme to the other. Either they're uncomfortable and they or they resent you, but I'm talking about the opposite sex will draw to you. They'll become drawn to your light. You'll find even your exes will be trying to reach out to you again. Especially if you know if they are around you or they may see you on a platform, or as I said, they may just notice you. Because when the when you're in the presence of the Lord, his light is going to change your countenance. It makes you beautiful and you don't even have to be that attractive. You can't just the anointing alone will begin to draw people to you. But I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of God, that there are people who not only are they just drawn to your light, sometimes there's some that it is their specialty to try to dim your light, to tarnish and to taint what God has done in you. They are especially drawn when they see that anointing and they see you talking about the Lord. They may even follow you on your channel. They may begin to email you. That's why many of you that when you have these platforms on these channels, you need to be very mindful and be led by the spirit in who you're reaching, who you're allowing to reach out to, who you're responding back to. I don't respond back to everybody's emails or who reach out to me because the Holy Spirit will let me know when something is real or when it's just the enemy trying to draw us out. You know, the enemies can't, the enemy can't come no more with the old stuff, especially as you get closer to the Lord. So one of the biggest ways that he will be able to pull us in guys, if we're not discerning is by somebody contacting us under the guise of they want to get closer to God. They have something going on. And while we are supposed to reach out, you need to be discerning with the Holy Spirit and know how far you're supposed to go. Because my whole thing is if I'm encouraging you and I've been encouraging you and I'm giving you word and you keep reaching out to me all the time, then you're telling me that obviously whatever I'm telling you to do, whatever God, God is not working for you. You know what I mean? We can't give anybody more than Christ. And I'm here to tell you that when people keep coming back to you every week with the same problems over and over again, yes, it is a battle. And so we need to keep that in mind that yes, it is a battle, right? And they're going to go through things and we can encourage them, but sometimes they're not doing everything. When the battle comes and when the, and when things get complicated, they're not praying. When they come through that same temptation, they're not fasting as you instructed them to do. They're not getting up to seek God. They're not getting into the word of God. And a lot of times they just don't feel like it, but there's some people that's not their interest at all. They just want to be in your face and in your ear. And next thing you know, you're chatting and next thing you know, they're calling you. But some people, my brothers and sisters, you have to be very mindful, especially when you have this platform, whether you're single or you are married, that everybody that's contacting you and reaching out and coming with the problems, sometimes it is nothing but bait. And my whole thing is, if God can't help you, neither can I. Now, let me get back on topic here, guys. So you're going to find that there are going to be men, women, ladies, that are going to be drawn to the light within you. And all they want to do is prove that you are not all that. They want to pick the fruit. They want to taste the fruit. And they specialize in proving that you're not as saved and you're not as wholesome and you have not been converted. And they like it. They're drawn to the anointing, they're drawn to the light, but then they also want to know what's underneath all that light. What's behind the light? 
And once they have discovered all the nuts and bolts of it, they're no longer drawn to you because they've darkened you. Men, they're women that do that. They'll, they'll be drawn to you by your light, by your anointing, by your fire for the Lord. Attracted to you, just reaching out to you. But these women specialize in showing that, in wanting to prove to themselves that you're just a man like everybody else. All that anointing and all that talking you talking, she can get you to start texting her. She will eventually lure you into um, having inappropriate conversations with her. She can get you to respond back to her emails and everything. She'll be eventually able to get your personal email or get your um, phone number or you all are it's gonna start off you may just be contacting her with one of those temporary phone numbers and then it gets real now you feel like you can really give her your real number or she gives you hers but all it is is because they want what's forbidden and let's put it like this. It's not that we're forbidden. There's a difference between forbidden and what's set apart. When you've been set apart for Christ, when God has set you apart and he begins to pour in, in, in you his anointing and his wisdom and his knowledge, you've been fasting, you've been praying, you've had your ups and your downs, you've overcome. Here comes a whole different brand of a takedown. This is where the enemy are going the enemy is going to call in, you know, the the special ops. These are people that come and they look normal. Well, let's put it like this. Not normal. They look like they're innocent. They're going to come and they're going to look like they're about God because they're going to be talking about God and and they may even share um have a have some sort of a, a gift and they they may even have their own channels, guys. But what the Lord is just showing me that I need to share with you all is there's time. It is time for discernment. There are people who are attracted to that which is set apart by God. And to them, they just feel like they just want you. But behind that, you must see the principality in power that knows exactly who you are in Christ. And he wants to show that you are not all that. He wants to show that no matter how much church you talking and how much God you talking and how much you prophesying, you're still a woman and you're still going to lay down and be spread east, west, north, south, just like any common woman out there. No matter how much you're prophesying and no matter how much anointing you have, that spirit that operates in this woman only wants, recognizes Christ in you and wants to prove to the world and make you realize that no matter how much you're prophesying and no matter how much you're praying and no matter how much you're seeking out God that at the end of the day this woman can get you to send her an inappropriate text message or you're going to have that inappropriate conversation at the very least she can be in your heart and in your mind because you've been set apart so it's very important that you have discernment, guys. It's not enough to just prophesying and, and, and singing and all of that stuff. Those are God's gifts. But where is your heart at? That's what's very important. If your discernment is not on lock, if your discernment is not locked and loaded, <laughs> if you're not walking in wisdom and discernment to be able to hear with an ear hear from your spirit guys you want to hear with your spirit you want to hear with your spirit you want to hear what the holy spirit is warning you what he's showing you because a lot of times when people are talking and they're saying things and making it seem as if you know they're so interested in the lord they're interested in a project that you're working on or they're interested, you know, sermon or a message or something you did or, or that you, an exhortation, they will make it seem as if they are so interested in you and in that thing and they want to get closer to the Lord. And of course, naturally, we want 
we care for souls, right? And winning them for the kingdom. But with that, my brothers and sisters, it's important that you're walking in discretion, understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and discernment. Because there are people that simply want to taste what has been set apart by God. Okay? They want to prove that you're not all that you say that you are. And some of you, perhaps you may have fallen in this area. And what's, what's the feeling that immediately comes? Whether you've had that inappropriate conversation or you took it a step further, you immediately feel guilty. You immediately feel filthy, guilty, condemned, condemnation. You feel like you're not worthy of doing what the Lord has told you to do. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't allow the enemy to keep you there. Don't allow the enemy to keep you there or make you feel like, well, you might as well continue or do it another time because our life is very precious. You and I can never go back to what we did yesterday. Last, today is Tuesday. There will never be another Tuesday like today. There will be another Tuesday that will come, but it will not be this particular Tuesday. I want you to listen to this. I just clapped in time and that clap that I just did a couple, a second ago, that is an eternity. That is, that's it. I can clap again, but it is not the same clap. I can clap like this again next Tuesday, but it will not be the Tuesday that has been recorded in time that I clapped. So therefore, I want you to realize every time, every second you waste in condemnation or wasting your time or letting people waste your time, you can't go back to it. But guys, you need to move forward. If you have messed up in any way in this area, you have to ask the Lord to forgive you and not just forgive you so you can do it again. People don't ask for forgiveness because you feel guilty so you can do it again. You don't want those feelings that you have. Some people ask for forgiveness to take that guilty feeling off, but they are not truly repentant. So guys, I don't want to keep going on in this video. What I want to let you know of and put in your spirit today is that there are some people that they want to taste of what has been set apart. They're drawn to your anointing and what they specialize in doing is taking down the children of God, the sons and the daughters of God. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. They are the tares, which are the children of the wicked one that Jesus talks about when he gives the parable of the wheat and the tares. They are sent to destroy. They are sent to taint and tarnish. They are sent to bring you to a place of compromise in your walk. So be very careful. Use wisdom. Use discretion. Know when to cut things off. Know when you, you have to realize you have no more power than God or the Holy Spirit. If after you've encouraged and you've spoken to these, these individuals and you have spent time talking to them, however it has been. And sometimes if you've given them encouraging emails and it seems like they just want you to call them and call them and they just need to talk to you. Don't fall for that. Some things, my brothers and sisters, requires wisdom of God. So you need to check with God and say, Lord, should I make this phone call? Lord, should I allow this? Should I take this call? <laughs> and if God lays on your heart to call anybody, you need to call them private or from one of those temporary uh, phone numbers you can get. But more often than not, guys, you're going to hear a solid no. So be mindful be careful, protect your anointing. And how you protect it is just by being in the presence of the Lord and listening to his voice when he speaks to you. Some people are sent and they come in your life because not only are they drawn to your anointing, not only are they drawn to the light in you, they want to bring you down. And you need to know the difference. You need to be able to discern the difference, my brothers and sisters. Somebody needs to hear this. Turn to the Lord. Do not allow yourself to get caught up.